Aan van harte goeiemiddag en to our foreign attendees and viewers, welkom. His Excellency President Chandrika Persad Santoki, Her Excellency Se Secretary General of the CARICOM Dr. Carla Burnett, His Excellency Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Business and International Cooperation Albert Randin, Foreign and Local Dignitaries, Members of the Press, welkom. At the dawn of Suriname being chair of the CARICOM and hosting the 43rd CARICOM meeting, a discussion was held between the chair of the CARICOM and the CARICOM secretary general. It is our pleasure to have the CARICOM chair and the CARICOM secretary general at this press briefing. At first, the CARICOM chair will state his opening remarks. Then the CARICOM secretary, secretary general will have the floor. Afterwards, the members of the press will have the opportunity for questions to the head table. With no further ado, without further ado, the CARICOM Chair, His Excellency Chandrika Persad Santoki. Thank you. Thank you, Master of uh, Ceremony. Mr. Alpha Roosevelt. Welcome, everyone members of the press, press media, journalists, good afternoon. As is indeed an honor to host as country the 43rd meeting of the CARICOM. The heads of government of CARICOM member states conference in Suriname. And Suriname is ready, yes, to carry the torch and we understand the task at hand and are willing and able to work through the tremendous responsibility. We are ready as land and we are ready to work with the force of the of this vergadering of the CARICOM staff, the regering leaders, with the CARICOM secretariat. And today we are so far om u te informeren waar we staan met betrekking tot onze conferentie, de agenda, de onderwerpen, de attendance, de participanten, maar ook namelijk over de gehele organisatie. En we nemen die verantwoordelijkheid als voorzitter en zeker mijn persoon als president van het land, als voorzitter van CARICOM. Ik vind het een hele eer om deze vergadering te leiden van staatshoofden. Een eer omdat je als land ook leiding mag geven aan regionaal beleid samen met de overige leiders. Een eer omdat er issues zijn op dit moment die spelen in de wereld, in de regio, die om aandacht vragen. En dat vraagt ook om regionale standpunten. Dat vraagt ook om regionaal commitment. Dat vraagt ook om regionaal leiderschap. En dat is waarvoor we gaan. Onze stem duidelijk hoorbaar laten zijn. Naar de regionale gemeenschap, naar de wereldgemeenschap. Over de issues die om aandacht vragen. Zowel bij de individuele lidstaten als voor de CARICOM organisatie, voor de regio, maar ook de rest van de wereld. We hebben tal van... Gasten, vertegenwoordigers van organisaties op deze conference. En alle 15 landen zijn vertegenwoordigd. En er komen 13 regeringsleiders en twee vertegenwoordigers. Een aantal ambassadeurs die geaccrediteerd zijn bij CARICOM. Heel belangrijk is de aanwezigheid van de secretaris-generaal van de Verenigde Naties, met wie ik een aparte meeting zal hebben, bilateraal. Maar daarna heeft hij ook een meeting met alle leiders van CARICOM. De aanwezigheid van de secretaris-generaal van de Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States. De minister van Staat van Saudi-Arabië, die ook hier aanwezig zal zijn. En... Before coming over here at this press conference, we had a fruitful meeting with uh, the Secretary General of the CARICOM Secretariat on several topics. 
the agenda, the order of the agenda, but also the organization of the entire conference. And that is how we'll work the coming days. The chair, close cooperation with the SG of CARICOM, and together we'll lead this meeting with all the agenda, with all the topics, to a good end. We see the delegations in the coma. Met lane to stella. We see the delegations in the coma. Met charter to stella. We see the delegations in the coma. Ook over land. And our SG uh, decided to travel over land. So she saw the beauty of uh, the country of Suriname while driving from Guyana to Paramaribo. And welcome. Secretary General. En dan komen we nog steeds met delegaties. Vandaag. En de bedoeling is namelijk dat we in de loop van de dag alle delegaties hier zullen hebben. Misschien sommigen een beetje uh, vertraagd. Want hierna hebben we een, een, op agenda een bilateraal overleg tussen Suriname en Guyana. Zoals u dat weet in het uh, platform van uh, High Level political dialogue and cooperation. But I have understood that there is a little bit of stagnation for uh, what the incomes are. We have to be flexible to be there where stagnation is to be able to get up to and on to pass. The issues which we will discuss during this uh, conference are very uh, important issues for the region, for the nations, but also for the world. So we have on agenda the food security crisis. We have the energy crisis on the agenda, but also the opportunities for the energy and gas production. We have also the effect of the climate change and climate financing on the agenda, the further integration of our economic markets. That's very important for the integration of our economy. And the CARICOM is also on agenda. And also topics which are quite new. And that is one of uh, the topic uh, which was decided in Belize during the last uh, of government uh, meeting that Suriname was mandated to take an extra portfolio, and that's a portfolio on a policy, industrial policy, that's very important. And that's also an agenda. And we'll present as country the first design, what uh, we have drafted for the Caribbean on the, the development of the industrial policy. There will be meetings, also with a lot of uh, regional and international institutions, and we'll discuss also the community as a whole, the reorganization. We'll discuss also issues uh, which are also on the, on the, in the portfolio of Suriname. For example, the youth policy, and as you know, Suriname is the the head of the portfolio, which are on the quasi cabinet of Suriname within the framework of CARICOM. And there's culture, gender, youth, sport, and now added with industrial uh, policy. And there are a lot of other issues. Some of the issues will be discussed uh, uh, in closed sessions, in caucus, we call it. And those are also very uh, important issues as regards the security within our region, the security in uh, some of the member uh, countries of CARICOM, uh, like uh, Haiti, and a lot of other topics uh, which we consider as uh, very important and very strategic, which will be discussed in caucus. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the necessity of further strengthening of the bond between the nations of CARICOM and the necessity to evaluate what fruits CARICOM has brought to its member states is something that shall have our special attention during this meeting. While we look at CARICOM as a unity, we also spoke about specific member-bound issues. We understand that strong individual members make a strong team as CARICOM, and this will show in our term as CARICOM lead. While Suriname is hosting this meeting, it is good to say that the issue of climate finance is also on our agenda, which will be discussed not only within the CARICOM, but also with the Secretary General of the United Nations. Like other members, we have to deal with the effects of climate change. We do so while being one of the few countries in the world with the status of carbon negative, and that is what we want to keep. CARICOM as a whole is dealing with these effects, and we shall need to discuss this matter, for we as CARICOM members are not ranked as the highest contributors to climate change. Yet still, we have to deal with these issues. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are fully prepared for this summit, and we're ready to be engaged with all the participants, and we are ready to make this summit a successful one, a fruitful one, with a result which will make us a region stronger and also a result that will strengthen the integration, strengthen the bond with the CARICOM nations and the leaders. And at this meeting, we'll welcome also some new leaders which are recently elected as prime ministers in our sister nations. For this moment, I will leave it to this information and I'll ask the Secretary General to present her part of the activities which are on the umbrella of this SG. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. And uh, before I even discuss anything about the meeting, um, when I met with the President uh, a while ago, my first thing to him was that the welcome that we've received so far in Suriname has been really warm. We are really pleased to be here. The work that has gone before between the staff of the Secretariat and the staff of the Office of the President and the staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, has really been high-level work. The teams have been on it uh, for the last couple of months. Um, in order to ensure that not only the arrangements for the meeting are, are conducive to good discussions, but that the preparation of the agenda items themselves are such that the meeting um, is going to be well prepared uh, to consider and make the decisions that need to be made. Um, President Santoki has indicated the issues that are on the agenda, um, and so I won't um, go through them in any detail. I know you may have questions on them. Um, we are prepared to meet important uh, international guests who will be here. Um, as he mentioned, the Secretary General of the United Nations will be here the Secretary General as well of the Organization of Ar uh, African, Caribbean, and Pacific States um, will be here as well. So we are looking forward to excellent discussions, not only of the issues that we talk about in our meetings, such as single market, the new issue of um, industrial policy that's really very important that, that um, President Santoki will be leading on as the lead head re uh, responsibility for that food security and all of that, but also 
we will be dealing with issues in relation to CARICOM and the rest of the world in our conversations with our special guests in particular. So I will leave it at that and um, await your questions. And um, Mr. President, back over to you. Thank you, Madam Secretary General. Then I'll ask uh, the Master of Ceremony to guide us through this press conference and to see if there are questions. Yes, as stated, we have come to the point where you as members of the press will have uh, the opportunity to state your questions. There are microphones to your left and to your right. So if you have a question, please state the press house that you belong to and your name, and then you can fire your question away. Who will be the first? Mr. Cairo. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ivan Cairo from the Water Tate and Caribbean Media Corporation. Um, the question I have is for Ms. Barnett. Um, for many years in the region, um, the criticism is that the CARICOM summits are merely talk shops that don't produce what the region, the people of the region expect. What guarantees are there that this umpteen 43rd regular meeting does not result in just talks again and we don't see the fruits of what happened in the region? Thank you so much. Let me, let me answer that in two parts. Um, the first part is that a lot of what CARICOM is set up to do and does every day is not what we often see reported in the media. There is a lot of work that we do, for example, in facilitating trade um, on a daily basis. Uh, there's a lot that we do, um, all the work that we've done recently, for example, under the leadership of President Ali to organize to increase production. We are expecting to see of agricultural uh, commodities. Um, those are the kinds of things that we do. Can we do it any better? Of course we can. Of course we can. We all can, can improve what we do. One of the important things on the agenda um, for this particular meeting is precisely that, how we can organize ourselves better, how we can ensure that when we make decisions, we make decisions that are implementable and no time frames for implementing decisions. Sometimes we, we are not bound by time and, and, and we don't act as, as fast as we could or should. Um, so we are doing that kind of introspection at this meeting um, to determine what can be done to improve the way we implement decisions. Um, and, and so my, my response to you is in two parts. There's a lot that we do that doesn't get reported, and there's a lot that we can do to improve how we do our work. And we are uh, sorting out how we can, can make those improvements. Thanks. Next question, please. We will um, ask our, your colleagues who are joining via Zoom. I see that News Talk Radio Guyana has a question. Uh, if the possibility exist can we please do that question at this moment yes with me Danny Chabrol from South Radio Guyana and for our ladies um, to the President of Suriname and during the Secretary General can you say definitively and specifically uh, what are the details surrounding the, uh, the acquisition of maritime transportation I know a lot of talk has been uh, made about this in recent months and years, but what are your concrete efforts so far to get uh, maritime transportation up and going for the movement of goods and people? Mr. President. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, this uh, question. Uh, the topic of uh, connectivity is on the agenda of um, CARICOM. It's on the agenda of the heads, and uh, we are discussing all possibilities how to increase the connectivity among the islands and the connections between all these uh, member states. It's not uh, an easy issue, and we have decided that uh, the issue of connectivity, maritime connection, should be discussed 
on the public sector level with governments, but as well as on the private sector level. And the approach should be to get more engagement from the private sector to invest in this opportunity to have that connectivity. And yes, you start with one of those uh, vessels or ferry. Yes, you can uh, continue with the second one, but you need to have that decision made jointly between the uh, government and the private sector. And this is one of the topics uh, what we will uh, uh, discuss uh, during our heads of conference uh, meeting over here. But I just want to add something more on the question uh, which was addressed uh, by uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Cairo to give you some uh, examples. The president of Guyana is the lead head on the agriculture and agribusiness policy. And he presented a comprehensive strategy during the last summit in Belize. And the decision was immediately taken to have a seminar to implement that strategy. And that seminar was held in Guyana a couple of weeks ago. And it's again on agenda now just to continue with the follow-up what we had agreed because we want to see concrete results. Another example is that Suriname was mandated in Belize to take the responsibility for the industrial policy. And yes, after four months, we will present the first design on the industrial policy for the Caribbean with a document of more than 80 pages on how we will design that. That means that there is action, that we are understanding our responsibility. That a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, that we had the meeting, the Summit of the Americas in the United States, where President Biden and Vice President Kamala had a meeting with all the Caribbean leaders. And we agree that the cooperation should be stronger. And we agree that we need to go for concrete measures in the bilateral relation. And yes, we agree that there will be three committees comprising of CARICOM leaders, and the leadership of the United States. And those three committees are prepared, and it's on the agenda. And this meeting will finalize the team members, and I can tell you there is a follow-up already. There is a follow-up already, and those working groups are the working groups on finance, food security, and climate crisis. And there are meetings planned already. So this is how we're moving, and uh, yes, there are issues which are taking sometimes more time because you need to address that in close cooperation with other institutions, the regional institutions, but we will continue to put it on the agenda till we get the results, what is needed for our Caribbean community. Madam Secretary, care to elaborate? Uh, well, your, your uh, president has said it well. Let me let me um, reiterate that um, the matter of follow-up and implementation is squarely on the table. Um, it's a matter that was discussed um, in Belize um, in March, um, and we are following up on uh, ensuring that we do what needs to be done not only uh, within the Secretariat itself in terms of the, the um, organizational changes that we are doing within the Secretariat, but also across the community. Because when decisions are made, the implementation is across the community. And so the responsibility for improving how we do business, which is not only a matter for the, for the Secretariat and CARICOM matters, but generally, we always want to improve the way we do business, and therefore, the, um, the focus in this meeting on addressing that as a separate issue, in, in, in addition to treating with the larger issues that are on the table, um, gives um, seriousness to the issue of ensuring that the community um, is better prepared, um, continuously improving the way it does its business. Thank you, Madam Secretary General. Mm -hmm. Ms. Palis. My name is Amanda Palace from Key News. 
Um, President, um, the Minister of Agriculture, you gave him a lot of homework in, in case of food security, even though it's in Guyana's pro portfolio that Suriname was supposed to help in pledging land um, so we can contribute in that case. And the Minister of Agriculture was supposed to present um, land that uh, we wanted to pledge. Uh, how far are we on that issue? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yes, indeed. That uh, commitment uh, was uh, presented uh, during the last uh, conference in uh, Belize, where uh, I, as president, had uh, pledged that Suriname will make land available, fertile land available for joint investment in the agriculture sector, in the agribusiness, uh, by utilizing also uh, uh, modern technology. The Minister of Agriculture was uh, instructed to identify those uh, lands that has been done. And the Minister of Agriculture was also uh, instructed with his uh, expert to have um, a thoroughly examination on the soil. And based on the examination, uh, we should get as uh, a head uh, proper information for what type of productions those uh, uh, lands are suitable. So that will be one of our presentation uh, during uh, the industrial policy, but also when Guyana will uh, present uh, the, the report on um, uh, agriculture and uh, agribusiness. Uh, we are supporting the idea of uh, CARICOM uh, enterprises, uh, where more CARICOM members uh, can participate, uh, the public sector as well as uh, the private sector will promote that. And uh, then we have uh, to invite uh, the investment uh, community to invest. And that is where we're looking for, invest in close cooperation with the local content, with the local business community. So um, we'll continue with that and we are making um, uh, concrete uh, steps in implementing that ID and Guyana and Suriname is working very close on uh, implementing uh, this uh, pledge which has been uh, done by, Guy by Guyana as well as by uh, Suriname. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go again to our uh, Sorry, if I may. Ms. Yes. Uh, Secretary General. Yes, yes please. If, if I may add um, one point to the issue of agricultural development across the community. Um, we want this improvement in agricultural production to be something that carries on into the future. So there's an aspect of it that I like to, to emphasize, which is the involvement of young people. Um, there are a couple of undertakings. One is to, to uh, invest in young people in training and education for, for agricultural production. And the other, of course, is to actually involve them in investing in agriculture. And there's a project being led by uh, President Ali, which is available for all of the countries to seek to implement as well, which is to give access to young people shade houses that they can invest and uh, produce for sale the stuff that we import, especially the fancy vegetables for tourism. Um, so involving the young people so that there is a, what we like to call the intergenerational um, sustainability of the investment so that the young people will carry it forward because it's not only for this generation but for the others coming up. Thanks. Thank you. As we look to our Zoom participants, um, Jermaine Abel.
Um, let me, let me um, answer first in relation to how we gauge success. And you, you mentioned the CSME. I think there is a, there's a misunderstanding sometimes that the CSME is like a valve, you turn it on. It's not like that. There's a, there is a series of laws that need to be changed. There's a series of practices. There's a, a full suite of actions that need to be taken. And every time we take one and implement one and move on to the other, that's progress. It's incremental. Is the process, is, is the progress fast enough? Probably not. Um, that's, that's the impression that um, persons would want to give. But for the very fact that we're able to move more easily among one another um, at this stage than maybe we were five years ago or 10 years ago um, is an indication of progress. We have to keep moving um, at it, yes. And we are going to be discussing a variety of things, particularly in relation to um, the more nuts and bolts of, of the CARICOM single market, which is in relation to rules of origin and common external tariff and all of those things that we've been working on and making progress um, on for, for a long time. Um, there are aspects of this single market that, um, that need further work, um, that need further strengthening. Um, free movement of persons as opposed to free movement of commodities um, or other factors of production, yes, we do need to do that better. But it is not true to say that we've not made any progress at all because progress is incremental and there are certain things that will always be on the agenda um, and you find that in any integration process um, where we need to be modernizing and doing widening um, our range of collaboration and cooperation over the years. And so that's what we're going to be doing. I think you asked a question about travel, intra-regional travel. Um, there are two things at play here. One is that intra-regional travel, like international travel, suffered the consequences of the COVID pandemic. So there's been um, a, a severe reduction in the level of travel globally, and that also happened within the region with implication for the ability of the airlines to continue to, to provide the level of service that they would have been providing prior to the pandemic. So there are issues that need to be addressed there within our local airline industry, much in the same way we're seeing those issues being, being dealt with globally. I'm sure you all would have seen some of the issues going on at the international airports um, because of, of the, the impact of COVID and what that has meant in terms of passengers not being able to travel and the increased costs of operating, increased costs of tickets and all of that. So our airlines have been affected by that as much as anybody else's airlines have been affected. Um, we are expecting to discuss the issue of transportation at this meeting. We, like the rest of the world, are only now coming out of the pandemic and trying to figure out how the, 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 the travel will, will, um, will return to some kind of normality. Many of our member states are heavily dependent on tourism, and so it is not only regional, but also international travel um, that's important for us to always be, be mindful of the, the uh, changes, the, the responses as, as we come out of our crisis. So that's going to be discussed. I think I heard a question about travel taxes, though that's not a matter that's on the agenda. And we have to get the travel working before we talk about the taxes. Thank you. Uh, as we go to the end of our um, press briefing, we, we will give the president um, the moment to add value to the question. And then we have the time for two fa uh, for final questions. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, emphasize that there are a lot of issues which are on the agenda, but there are a lot of issues which were discussed in the past, decisions were taken 
and those decisions are implemented. And those implementations are institutionalized within the Caribbean region. And I'll give you some of the examples. One of the examples, and I'll give you examples in the area of cross-border issues, where you need that cooperation, where you need each other to support each other, to assess each other as region. One is the issue of health. And we saw it during the COVID-19 pandemic, how important it was to have a common strategy with all the countries on the movement of persons to taking the necessary measures, the protective measures. And there we saw the strength of CARICOM, of CARFA, in dealing with such an important issue that we can say yes, that it is controllable for the region, and sure controllable in our country. And we share this information coming during the coming summit where all the countries will give their status and CARFA will present a proper report on the current status of the COVID in the Caribbean. The second one is the security issue. Yes, we do have mechanisms and institutions within the Caribbean framework and system. We have the impacts, which is coordinating the security cooperation but we have also cooperation with the impacts and the, the other regions to guarantee security for our citizens, to guarantee security for our nations. And there is also an example that there is good cooperation among all the security entities of the system nations. But also, when we are facing serious disasters as nations by hurricane, but also man-made, disasters. We have the SEDEMA, it's a regional organization, and we experienced this just a couple of weeks ago. Now, when Suriname is confronted with flooded areas, yes, we had declared those territories as disaster area. And SEDEMA came, physically, SEDEMA came with support. And that is where we have to look also. There is a lot of other areas of cooperation which are very important for the regional cooperation. Yes, and if we as nations are identified and ranked internationally as a region, as countries with a low-lying coastal areas, that we will be the first country which will be affected by global warming, well, then you need to have the cooperation to to create a strong voice towards the world. That we as countries, we don't have the strong emission, but we are impacted by the global warming. And that with one voice, we can make the calls toward the world to get the support what we need as Caribbean nations, as countries which are threatened by the global warming. And those are some of uh, the examples where we have to focus also. Yes, and I've uh, expressed also my view on the last conference, and I believe that more should be done on the economic uh, integration. Because here as leaders, we are in charge to take those decisions. We can have problems to get access to the European market. We can have problems to get access to the United States market or the Can Canadian market. But here in CARICOM, we are in charge. The Caribbean leaders are in charge. And there we have to make the proper decision. On the goods, let us identify those goods which should be made accessible for the region. And let us start with cooperation. I called it during the last meeting, SG, the coalition of willingness. Let us start with one, two, three, four countries. And you will see if it will be expanded with more and more countries. But we need to make that start to get that integration and that accessibility of our products to all the Caribbean nations. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the lady in gray. Good afternoon, Vishani Ragmer from the newsroom in Guyana. Two questions from me. 
Uh, earlier this week at your energy summit, there was talk of creating a regional energy plan. In the first instance, what's the level of priority that's being given to the creation of that plan at this summit and who is perhaps going to be leading those efforts? And secondly, on food security, just to follow up, there's been a lot of talk about this since the intersectional meeting and at the Agri-Investment Forum. What actual progress has been made so far on resolving trade barriers that exist? Thank you. Yeah, um, the issue of energy security is really a top priority across the region. In fact, um, it's one of the matters that engaged the heads in their discussion uh, with President Biden and Vice President Harris when they met in, in LA. And there is a, a set of follow-up conversations that are already taking place there. But within our region, the Prime Minister of Trinidad is the lead head on energy and energy security. And there's an active discussion taking place because one of the the negative impacts that we're feeling from the impact of the Ukraine situation, of course, is the rising fuel prices across the world. And um, so there are discussions that are presently on the way. It is not my um, place to say where those discussions are because they are active. Um, but I'm sure that by the time we come to the end of this meeting, this, this heads meeting, there will be um, some decisions that we'll be able to convey. At this time, the focus is on ensuring that we can have greater security in our energy supply, even as we seek to ensure that for the long term, the transition to renewable energy and all of that takes place. At this point in time, um, the real priority for us is ensuring that we have adequate supplies of energy um, as we need them to continue our economic activity today. So that's, that's part of, of uh, what we're going to be discussing um, over the next few days. And uh, there was a second question. What was the second question? What progress has What's been made on resolving trade barriers? Oh, trade barriers. Um, the <laughs> part of the reason why we have a common market as a part of the Caribbean community, um, it's now a, we call it a single market, is because there are trade barriers that need to be removed among ourselves. Um, we've moved the majority of those trade barriers over the years, and there are a few issues that need to be addressed that are not your normal trade barriers, which is uh, prohibition on trading, but more in terms of non-tariff barriers that we need to work through. And that involves a conversation not only with our uh, customs officials and our Ministry of Finance officials, but also requires conversation among the uh, port health, among the veterinarians who are set up to protect um, the introduction of pests and diseases and all of that. So when we talk about trade barriers, it's not necessarily the trade barriers in the sense that um, goods cannot move from one country to the other, which is where we started from when we, we initiated common market and then single market discussions 50 years ago. Um, so we are working those through, um, and there are a few very difficult ones because as small islands, uh, many of our territories um, and small states generally um, have implemented strong systems for protecting local production. And uh, so we are working through how to remove those. Um, and I do believe that we're going to be taking, uh, getting uh, updated information on the progress so far um, for those discussions that have taken place since we met in Belize and then discussing how we uh, remove the remainder of whatever may still be there. But it is not trade barriers in the sense of tariffs and prohibitions, it is non-tariff barriers that we tend to be talking about, which tend to be about protecting um, our, our productive capacity. So those are on the discussion, and we're expecting to hear where we are um, with those in the next several days. Mr. President? Yes, thanks. Uh, 
just uh, uh, to add one detail more as regards uh, the design of our regional energy strategy. As mentioned by the SG, the reality now is that there is a war going on in the world, the Ukraine war. And that war is having a lot of impact to all the nations in the world. But that war is having also negative impact on the availability of fertilizers. Kunstmes, there is a strong shortage of fertilizers in the world, which will sure impact the food security. And here is the opportunity in the Caribbean, Trinidad with proper gas, fossil gas, Guyana with proper fossil gas, Suriname with proper fossil gas. And if we will agree to design as quick as possible a common strategy on it to speed up the exploitation of this gas. Then as a region, you can support the entire world, but particularly the Caribbean region, with the production of fertilizer in our own region, to distribute the food, those fertilizers to all the nations and the entire world to guarantee food security. And finally, yes, Guyana and Suriname, but maybe also Belize, with fertile land, and that is what we are offering to the Caribbean, to make good use of it, to have that guarantee of food security. And our nations, the Caribbean region, can benefit from it if we have a collective approach, if we have the willingness for joint investment without any barriers. And Suriname and Guyana took the decision to pledge to the Caribbean community and to offer them fertile land to start with the Caribbean investment to increase the food production and to guarantee food security. Thank you. I see that there is nece uh, the necessity for one final question. Mr. Cairo, I would ask you to um, uh, ask your question as soon as Ms. Uh, Thomas is uh, ready. Then we can do those questions together, please. Fishmani Thomas from Suriname Herald. Um, as we talk about oil prices, um, is it are we gonna are CARICOM countries gonna talk about how they will we will be able to help each other in coping this situation in order to keep the um, oil price at a certain level manageable for the people? And another question is about the climate change. We know it's a burning topic, and uh, CARICOM countries um, are not quite the uh, um, the big contributors and Suriname is even a carbon negative um, economy. Um, how is, during this summit, how are the CARICOM has gonna be able to um, speak out uh, what's gonna have to happen when we talk about incentives for taking care of uh, the Amazon? Um, can we expect ex aggressive steps? Because it's always the big countries that are uh, calling the big shots. As you will start. The, I, I will, Mr. President. The, the reality about climate change, um, as the President articulated before, um, we are countries that contribute very little to emissions that cause climate change, but we bear the more than proportionate burden of the impact of climate change. Um, the reality of the situation is that that's not something that only we know. The whole world knows that, um, particularly the large industrial countries, they know that. Um, and at a political level, um, they are aware of what the science tells us, that if we do not halt, reduce significantly, um, reduce the amount of emissions that are generated, then the climate crisis will continue. We could produce zero emissions, Suriname is net negative, 
and that will not change the, the trajectory. It's the big countries that need to reduce their emissions, and therefore the incentives for em emission reduction needs to take into account the reality that the big countries need to do what the science says needs to be done. There's a lot of focus on smaller countries. There's a lot of focus on developing countries. And yes, we need to do the right things as well, but the big countries as well. This means for us that it's not only about the science. It's also about the political organization. It's also about the advocacy. And one of the things that we want to do at this meeting is to ensure that our preparation for the next big global confab, which is COP27 later this year, that we are even better prepared for this one than we were the last one. So there'll be some discussions about that, significant discussions about that, about how we prepare, how we ensure that when our heads, when our ministers of foreign affairs, when our ministers of the environment speak at these global events where the discussion is about climate change, that we all are organized and speak the same language and are advocating in a way that, um, that makes sense. Now, that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about with the UN Secretary General, because within the UN context, that's an important place where that discussion um, about what is necessary to change to ensure that the global warming, that we are seeing the impact on our weather systems. If we were to do, as I said, if we in our region were to do everything to not emit anything at all, it would not change the global scenario because it's really the big countries that need to change their own practices. But in a way that that um, that puts the onus on us to convince them and it puts the onus on them to do the right thing. Um, and we can continue to advocate, we will. We will also continue to invest as much as we can in um, adaptation and mitigation and all of those things that we have to continue to do. Um, but it's not only about our action, it's also about advocating for action at the global level for the big countries to do the right thing. So there's going to be a fair amount of discussion on strategy, um, on planning how we move forward in, in, in getting ourselves organized for the COP27 discussions that will take place at the end of this year. Mr. President. Uh, thank you. Just uh, to add uh, some uh, uh, information on the, on the question of uh, the uh, food security. The reality in the Caribbean is, and most of the Caribbean nations, the small um, island states, they have a strong tourism business. And tourist business has a strong demand on food. So here you need a very close cooperation among the Caribbean states. Suriname, Guyana, they can offer plenty of food to all the Caribbean nations. And therefore we need that regional strategy on food security. Therefore we need also bilateral arrangements where the countries, Barbados is interested in the food from Suriname and Guyana, but it's on agenda to have that bilateral meeting as a side event during our conference over here. But sure, you need also to meet the standards and the criteria for food safety. And therefore, you need to have the mechanisms in place, the laboratories in place. And you have heard what we are doing in Suriname, to invest in the laboratory capacity, to examine all the products what we want to export, export, but also the products what we want to consume over here, that all these products should meet the criteria for food safety. And that is a guarantee, what everyone wants. So we have to comply also with those standards which are very important. 
and the food security. And finally, the climate change. Yes, we are a carbon negative country. We are impacted by the climate change, the global warming. And what is the world asking? Adaptation, as mentioned by the Secretary General, unpassing, 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 and together, secondly, mitigation. For mineral, for mineral, for each tooth. Take to Suriname. Look at Suriname. With that long coastal line, Ampasa, you have to adapt. How? And we should pay for that. That is why we are cooperating with the Caribbean community to take a common stand, to have a unity when we should approach the entire world for that compensation, the loss and damage. We should pay for that. Someone should pay for that. And that's on agenda. And finally, yes, we have our pristine forests with high forests and low deforestation. And we are functioning as a carbon sink for the world. Who's paying for us? Who's paying? Nobody. Well, here you can take a common and joint strategy as Caribbean nation, and that's on agenda, also with the U.S. Secretary General, to come with concrete actions towards our community, to protect our nations, which are threatened, which are threatened by global warming. And our nations and our people are not the responsible persons for that high emission. Therefore, you need that strong cooperation within the Caribbean community. The final question. Uh, my next question is for uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, we, we see that at this meeting, the CARICOM will engage with uh, the Secretary General of the African, Caribbean and Pacific States. I would like to know what are the issues that will be addressed with the, the SG of the AO, OACPS and on what, on what um, sectors and issues and policies will, will this engagement be and, and what do we, the, the, the region, expect to come out of these discussions? Thank you. Yes, good afternoon as well to everybody. Um, Mr. President, Secretary General, it's uh, an important engagement because Secretary General Chicote will engage directly with the heads of state, the leaders of government. Um, there are basically four issues which are to be expected to be discussed. One is an ongoing institutional matter, which is the restructuring of the ACP Secretariat in Brussels. Um, it's coming at the tail end, so it's almost done, but there is some fine tuning required still. So that is something which needs to be discussed. Also the division of how many persons from certain regions will be accommodated to, f to function at the Secretariat. Of course, this CARICOM as a whole and CARI Forum in this context will request also its fair share of positions within the Secretariat. The second issue is the relationship with the European Union because CARI Forum, that's uh, basically the platform from which the ACP operates, um, enters a new stage of a relationship in terms of development financing with Europe with the European countries. And uh, there are some outstanding issues there. For instance, in terms of the budget, which is reserved within the European Union for these countries. The European Union proposes to have the budget uh, added to the Latin American Caribbean. The Caribbean itself finds that there should be a separate budget for the Caribbean as it was used to be. 
So that's the second topic, but in the broader sense also, the more political developmental relationship between the European Union and the ACP states. The third one has to do with the global issues. ACP represents more than almost 60 countries in the world um, with the African grouping the largest, um, but possibly also with the largest potential with a population of almost a billion people. So there is growth there in terms of the economy, in terms of production, in terms of economic partnerships, but also in terms of political clout. And especially in this context where we, when we are talking about some sort of a reframing of the international order, the AACP can play a role in terms of that political um, opinion. And the last one has to do with the post Cotonou arrangements, which uh, fundamentally have been concluded but needs to be signed off um, at some point. And due to COVID, it was postponed several times. It was supposed to be in Samoa. Um, at this point, we don't know where it will be, but the signing off is important so that there is a commitment in terms of this arrangement. Those are four specific issues. The benefits are within those agreements within the post Cotonou agreement, but also in the context of the developmental relationship between CARI Forum through ACP as well, but others uh, directly with the European Union as well. So it's important for us to host him, to listen to him, to understand the dynamics, and to see what kind of guidance we can provide him and he us how to go about this new environment which is emerging within the globe. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will ask the president if he has um, any, if he finds it necessary to do some closing remarks. Uh, thank you, the master of uh, ceremony. Well, uh, there will be a lot of opportunities the coming uh, days for uh, the media to obtain all informations uh, on the uh, conference. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, media uh, coverage. Uh, there will be also access uh, to the conference and conference information. So don't worry, uh, and we'll provide you with uh, all the necessary information. On the other side, uh, yes, I'm seeing that uh, it's raining. Later on this afternoon, we'll have the 10 kilometer uh, Caribbean walk, Caribbean run, and uh, that will be the first one after the COVID period. So a lot of uh, uh, Caribbean Athletes, athletes will be present over here. So I'm inviting you to uh, not only to observe this uh, 10K Caribbean run, but if possible to take part also in this 10K walk. I'll call it walk, but if you can run, go for it. Thank you very much. God bless you all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the press, we have come to the conclusion of this press moment. I thank you for your attendance. Please stand so that our president, the chair of the CARICOM, can make his way to the next venue.